So, so it's me. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 I was just getting the recording started. Oh, okay. So, everybody, welcome back to uh, Addiction and the Three Principles. We're back from taking the summer off and really happy to have Amy Johnson with us to kick off the new season or whatever you want to call it. I feel like we're a Netflix episode or something. We, we got a new season coming up. But I, I'm really excited to have Amy on because she is just exploding with just the way she's she's getting this understanding out there and her little school of big change is just doing phenomenally well and I, I really I really like the the format of it and, and exactly what she's <laughs> what she's up to here because it, it's just she's going to help so many people so uh, Harry had a little something to say and then we'll get into Amy yeah one one of the things that has always been a passion of mine uh, in the last year is how is the community going to grow in this area? And um, I, I went on one show of Amy's, not as a guest, just a participant, just to see what she was doing. And I was really impressed with how many people came on, came on the show and also how many people wanted to discuss this particular topic. And Amy, Amy has, has created within her own a network of community. And Greg is doing the same thing with the facilitators in this, in this room. Uh, and I, I sort of see now that it's going to, I wondered how we were going to get together. And I thought, well, in my mind, it could be an organized thing. But what I saw, see is it's organic. Amy's organically expanding it out in her way. Greg's organically expanding it out in his way. I'm organically expanding it out in, 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 in that way. And so there is a sense, I'm starting to get a sense of community. And I would have to say, Amy, you're one of the leaders for sure in, in this particular area. And, and so that greatly impressed me with, uh, with your, your talk and so on. And the other thing, I, I, Greg and I mentioned something he had on this on the on his facilitator where this lady talked a lot about the body and I, I'm happen to be have a, a client who, or a person I have, who's a naturopath and she's talking about genes and so and I know you talk about neuroscience and so on and 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 to be honest most of the people here don't have much of a they have a fascination in that area but not an understanding so with that in mind I'm going to shut up <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, and thank you guys for inviting me back. And I'm um, I'm really excited. I'm gonna do the best I can by you for 40, 45 minutes or so. And I'm happy to just have a discussion. I'll share a few things that are on my mind lately. But I love to, you know, just go back and forth and hear about what you're interested in. Um, but yeah, I'm really honored to, to be here for your season premiere. So that's awesome. It should be like a red carpet or something. <laughs> um, I love what you guys are. Yeah, I love what you guys are doing with this. I mean, that's exactly what you're talking about, Harry. It's like, I see this with your project where you're pulling out the clips and you're, you know, you have, like, whatever comes of this, it's just amazing to see how a community just kind of grows around something of value. Just something of, you know, if there's like a nugget of truth or some kind of essence in there that you resonate with, it's like the community just kind of comes, like flocks to it, you know, and I've, I've seen that. I've seen that in what you guys are doing. So um, I think it's really exciting. And I, I think from what, what I've seen from people, now a lot of the people I talk to um, have no idea what the principles are. They have no, like they, they maybe have read some spiritual books. They've definitely probably read a couple psychology type of books. Um, but for the most part, they're just everyday normal people who are just really struggling saying, hey, I'm smart. I've accomplished things in my life. Like, why am I stuck here? And why is it that the harder I work and the more I do, the more stuck I tend to get? That's what really throws them. And that's why I love them because that's what threw me. <laughs> it's like, this does not add up. I'm supposed to be able to just put my nose to the grindstone, work hard and accomplish anything I want which we can in many ways, you know, but when it comes to this kind of deep inner change, like what I like to call a sea change, that's what, that, that is so different. And, and so we're all running around 
not we all, but a lot of people out there innocently are running around trying harder, pushing harder, thinking they have to pull the right lever, manipulate the right thing to finally get their change to happen. And until their change happens, they're doing something wrong and they're missing it. So they go to work harder and faster, you know, and it's like the most ironic thing in the world because the more we're running around, the more we're missing it. We're just up in the weeds, up in our heads, up in the minutia, and the details that look so real and big and deep and personal. And I can't believe I drank this last week or I ate that yesterday or I said that to my partner or I did this in front of my kids. And it's like so much about that detail level of life that we just keep innocently say, stay so caught up in because it really looks like if we can get that all worked out, then we'll just get to fall into some kind of relaxation. Then it'll all be okay. It's just that we're messing up so often that we're not, we're not granted this freedom or something. But it feels like there's such, and I know many people have talked about this, it feels like there's such like a tipping point that we're at with people getting this. Because more and more, and this has been a huge change even in just the last like three years, let's say, for me sharing this. And part of that might be my grounding and how I see this. But what I've seen even in just two or three years is that people feel seem so much more open to the fact that, okay, this isn't like, life isn't my thing to manage. I don't need to just learn more, get smarter, work harder, figure it out. Like that's starting to not resonate with people so much anymore. I think it's, um, it, it's looking so much more like common sense that, okay, there's something more to life than what I see and where my mind just, you know, the picture my mind plays out day in and day out. And I just feel like people are getting kind of wiser to that, which is really exciting to see. So I don't know if there's a real tipping point happening out in the world where like our consciousness really is rising. If, it, if it's an effect of all the work we've all been doing to kind of, you know, share a deeper truth. Um, humans are just evolving. If I just see it, because I see that more now, may probably it's a combination of all of that. But I think it's such a cool, exciting time and an opportunity we all have to, sit, to just help people see, like, wait a minute, does this really make sense? That you're in charge of your own life. <laughs> that you have to make your freedom happen, you know, or peace of mind happen, you know, by doing a bunch of stuff. And when we just look at it, again, it's so easy to see so many examples of how it's just the opposite. The harder we try, the more we push, the more frustrated and caught up we get. So, um, in thinking about this, and I'm also uh, doing a talk in November at like a leadership conference with, from what I can gather is a lot of super high achieving, stressed out and people that like run hospitals and big have really, you know, are doing huge things in the world, but they come together for this leadership summit every year in November um, in Phoenix, where it, the promise of this summit is, is to kind of help them calm down. It's supposed to be like the anti, the antithesis of like the typical leadership summit. So it's not where you sit around in a room and like, you know, work out your plans. It's kind of supposed to help them have a mental relaxation. And so I get to speak at this in November and they asked me to speak about purpose. And so I've been putting that on the back burner a little bit and just kind of saying, okay, what, what can I see? Like, I don't know what I'm going to see, but like bring something on purpose. I need, I need something. So help me out with something here on like being on purpose or knowing what your purpose is. And, and so I've been having that there and also like thinking about talking with you guys today and what keeps, keeps kind of ringing in my mind is um, in the documentary, Amy, which is about Amy Winehouse. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It's a couple years old, I think at this point. Amy Winehouse, amazing talent and just really sad story, you know, just really caught up for most of her life. Amazing talent though. Um, she did a duet with Tony Bennett near the end of her life. And Tony Bennett has this quote, which I don't know exactly, but he says something along the lines at the end of the documentary, he says something along the lines of, you know, it's, it's so sad because so Amy died in like her late twenties, I think maybe early thirties. Um, 
He says, it's so sad because life really shows you how to live it. You just have to stay around long enough to see that. <laughs> like you can't, you can't get that caught up and die in your twenties. You know, most of us don't get it in our twenties if we're lucky to get it in our you know nineties. But he's like, life, life is showing you how to live it all along. It's showing you how to live it. We just have to stick around and we just have to like know that that's, that it's showing us how to live it. Right. So get out of the way, like get quiet and just kind of take that nudge and, I just love that so much, that idea that life is constantly showing us how to live it. Now, when I think about these, any of us really, but like I was thinking about these high achiever people that I'll be speaking with and, and because I would have gone there myself and, and still probably would at times saying, okay, well, what's life showing me? Okay, what is it? Like, what, what's the purpose? Like, what am I, how am I supposed to live it? You know, and we're looking out to some big statement, like the voice of God's going to show up and say, you should be a coach. You should write a book. Like, no, it, it's not like that. I don't think. I mean, although that probably happens, but it's like, it's hard. It's easy to miss because life seems like it's showing us how to live it in like tiny little ways that we're just thinking over. If we're up here in the minutia, again, if we're in, I can't believe I did this. What do they think about me? I can't believe I ate or drank that. When we're in all that stuff, you're, we're not like life is still showing us how to live it, and we're actually still guided by it in phenomenal ways. But there's a lot we're going to miss there too, and we're definitely going to miss the ease. So, you know, we're going to admit we're up here and trying to manage it all, and we don't ever like leave a, enough space. I think, or just check in, or get quiet, or look in there about, huh, what is life showing me? And kind of connected with this. I mean, one of the ways so. I, I think it's understandable that people say, well, like, what does that mean exactly? What do you mean life is showing me? How is life showing me? Because again, if it isn't this big booming voice saying, do this, you know, which it usually isn't, well, how does life show us how to live it? And, and I think about, you know, what we, most of us have seen something about, about our feelings and what our feelings are really showing us. I mean, just how amazing it is that we have, constant, never-ending feedback in every single moment about where, how much in that minutia we are, like how much in the concepts and the personal stuff and how much in that veil of thinking we're in, just by how like heavy we feel. I don't we even want to put like emotions and good and bad and any of that around it, but like what, I don't know, what I think so so much easier to grasp sometimes is like an open or closed or a heavy or light or like, or we can look at our lives really. I mean, when we're, when it looks hard, when it looks complicated, when it looks confusing, when we're caught up doing things and then saying, why am I doing this? That's totally normal. Every one of us here is, feels that stuff and is there in our own ways at times, but it's just feedback. I mean, it's the coolest thing. It's just feedback. It's like starting with that premise that, I mean, I don't know if it's a premise, but to me it feels like a truth, but you know, maybe it's just an idea that life is simple. It's living, it's lived through us. It's wonderful. And we are not going to experience that all the time. And that's totally fine. It kind of takes you back to like, okay, well, when we're not experiencing life as simple, amazing, you know, full of connection, easy. All that's ever showing us is that we're just in our, our little mental life. You know, we're not in big life. We're not sensing life. We're sensing our, our mental life more. Like how simple is that? You know, and that's like, that's how life shows us how to live it, right? It's just, we have this level of heaviness or lightness, this openness or closeness, this freedom or feeling captive to something. And if we can just read that, I love how Bill Pettit talks about it, like learning to read your instrument panel, you know, however, however he says that. But like, if we can kind of just get that sense of what that means, because, you know, I know for me, like I get that intellectually. And in some moments I really get it and I feel bad and I open up and like, oh, okay, I'm just thinking a bunch of garbage. And in a lot of moments I don't, I'm like, what's this? Well, what do I do? Well, how do I figure this out? You know, and that's okay too. Like we're always, you know, in some level in that, but 
I don't know, that just feels like something that's so simple and, and also so hard to get sometimes because we're so used to reading, reading that in a way that, um, that leads us astray a little bit. You know, you know, Amy, as I'm listening to you, one of Sid's major messages is the simpler, the better. And I, and I actually can feel from your first talk to, to now, how you have started to, to piece to get, it's in, interesting, you're very obviously of high intellect and, and you, so you see a lot of pieces to get, and yet you're bringing it, you're, you're bringing it down to the simplicity and that's where the clarity and that's where people can hear it. And the other is fascinating. And Greg and I were talking about the fascination of all this stuff, but it is in the simplicity of what you're expressing that, you're, that, you, that your growth is, is showing through. And that's inspirational for all of us because as we see you grow, of course, we can feel it for ourselves. So that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And I've, I've just seen that from other people so much, you know, like it never, ever of fails. Of course, isn't that the joke? Yeah, it never fails that when someone, I'm talking with someone and they're all about what they did, said, who am I? What does this mean? What about my past? What about my future? They just feel horrible. <laughs> and when they aren't in that, like it could be the same person from one moment to the next, you know, it could be like, but it's like when the lighter we feel, the more simple things look. And there might be some real thing outside, but we're just never going to, we're always going to be better equipped <laughs> when we're lighter and things look simpler. In, in fact, that's all that works. And that's that which, which, is, which is a revelation, because if you're walking with simplicity, no matter what's happening, it's still simple. Yeah. And knowing too, you know, that we, I always picture like this kind of, um, I don't know, like a line or something. Like we kind of just slide from one side to the other all the time. So I know a lot of times, and I definitely did this, like kind of seeing this, like, oh, that makes sense. Like the simpler, like, you know, the lighter we are and the freer our mind is, the more we're going to hear helpful stuff. And there's still a piece of that that's very strategic or that can be, or that was for me, right? Like, oh, okay, well then now my new job is to make everything simple and stay light and do that, you know? And, and so when you feel heavy, it starts to look like a problem. But I love seeing people get to that place where it's like, oh, isn't that funny? I'm all caught up in stuff. And then it's like, it's so instant sometimes. They just let go. And I don't know how you let go, but you, you just did it. You just saw and then whoop, you slide back back to simplicity. <laughs> so it's like this is there's this momentum just kind of moving us all over, wanting to move us towards simplicity, and we get a little caught up. But it's okay. You just let go, and then you just slide right back to this side. And that seems like you know when people are like, "Well, I've seen something, but I want more," or "I need a deeper insights," or "It's kind of working, but it's kind of not." And whatever that whole thing is, when you feel kind of one foot in, one foot out, I think that's so helpful. It in that kind of place to just, no, just, it just moves. We have no role in it. It just moves. And the more we stay out here and just watch our experience move, the easier everything gets. And that's, that's something that I think is important to talk about with the three principles is that it doesn't take away our experience of life. It just gives us a greater ease and comfort with that experience. Yeah. You know, we'll still have things happen that we don't care for that feel bad. And, you know, we go through it and we return back to that place of simplicity. Yeah. That's, that's the beauty of it. That's a big thing that's changed for me is that I just, I take the ups and downs much more gracefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a, it then also seems like another really cool point when you see someone kind of see that, you know, because in the beginning it does seem like, Oh, this is going to make my life always feel better. But to see that like, no, life can still feel really hard. You're still going to have every emotion that, that we're designed to have. <laughs> yeah. But you don't take it so seriously. 
Yeah. That's I the mean, thing. You feel it, you go through it, and then you just allow yourself to naturally return to that that place of well being. Yeah. You know, we because, get pulled away. Yeah, because and because it there's like when we're out here or I don't know whatever metaphor I'm using up here, when we're just kind of more removed from it in a sense, like, again, we aren't in that, the weeds of it so much. So I think, right, like why we take it seriously is our mind starts going, telling all the stories about it. But when it looks more like, yeah, this is a crappy feeling and I really hate it, but it's just energy moving through me. That's a totally different experience than this is a crappy feeling. I really hate it. What are the 20 things I need to do later to rectify it? And where did I go wrong? And what does this mean about me? And so, I mean, yeah, that's so cool to just see that even pain, even suffering, just be, have a levity around it instead of just that tightness. Well, even, even something like, uh, like I, I think of, <clears throat> times like let's say I'm talking to somebody and they're they're telling me about their recent experience with the flu how they got sick and and all the things that come with it and it's like the more I listen to it and the more I get into it and start thinking of the times I was sick with the flu I actually start experiencing some of the symptoms I don't have the flu but I start to get a little bit of an upset stomach and you know things start coming out it's it's amazing how powerful our our focus is um, you know what we decide to focus our, our thinking on it it's it, it really yeah. does make a huge difference in life and that's a really simple example where I get a little upset stomach or something but if we're walking through daily life every day remembering all those bad things that happened to us and the times we didn't feel right and things we didn't like what is that creating in our experience what yeah. symptoms are we creating for ourselves that we think are real but they're self-created by our own focus because we're not, we're not allowing that simplicity to be there. We're not allowing that well-being to just be. We get caught up in that thinking, and it's a natural part of life. But I, I do have to say I do it much less often now. Yeah. And it's not even our conscious focus. You know, It's like our mind will go out and just grab things because that's just how it works. So even if we're not sitting around thinking – you know, I had a horrible childhood or this flu is terrible or whatever. It's like, that's, I think what it means for like when our grounding shifts, when our consciousness kind of rises or however we want to say that our mind might still go out and, and focus, I guess, on things, but we're like, we're more resilient to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So it's like beyond even like what we're thinking about and it's just what's being brought up. But when there's lightness around it, it can't stay stuck. You know, it's like, it's like a, a river with a sheet of ice on it. Well, that water's still moving, but it's going to move a lot more slowly. When all the ice melts and the banks are all freed up, I mean, then the clip is like so much faster. So that's kind of how it is for us. Like we get tight and we have all that stuff around it. Everything's just slogging through or it feels like the more we see around it, then it doesn't really matter what shows up because the speed and the ease around it is just so much different. I, I wrote it in, in my book, uh, then it's not published. It's a serious topic, but you don't have to have a serious feeling about it. Yeah. And that actually was a bit of a revelation for me because it is true. Addiction is a hit serious topic. Uh, but it is also true that, that you are not going to find the answer through a serious feeling. And uh, that, that sort of freed me up to feel good about what I was doing with the people, because that's the only time I have a chance of sharing anything, is if I have a nice light feeling, or a, a genuine feeling, not a light feeling, but a genuine feeling of what, what it is in my heart to express in the moment. But if you get caught up in the seriousness of the topic, which is, which is, uh, which is uh, an exterior expression of the spirit, then it's, it's hard to get to fly with the eagles, to allow your thoughts to soar and turn your dreams into reality. It's difficult because you're caught up in, in this regular stuff. And what I like about what you're expressing now is you're, you're, you're acknowledging this, but you're also pointing to where the healing, the, the, the wisdom, lies within all of us 
Yeah, and I see, so I'm sure you guys see this, like, we've all felt it probably, like, um, it feels like the responsible thing to do, or it feels like what we need to do to stay in that heaviness, because it's a, or stay in the seriousness, right? I mean, you have an addiction, you think, or you're really struggling with something, you think, well, I, of course I have to take this seriously, that's my way to get out of it, <laughs> and so it's the biggest, you know, again, so much of this is so ironic, but it's like, no, the seriousness is what keeps us in it, we all want everyone to feel great, but but yeah, the more we can see it with lightness, the more room there is. I've just seen a lot of people kind of start to feel into this, but then kind of like pull themselves back to the, you know, the world of form because no, this is a serious issue. You know, that feeling of like, oh, well, are, are you trying to tell me that like my stuff isn't real, that my experience isn't real, that I don't really have these problems and they'll kind of come back over here where it's safe in their problem world in their head, trying to figure it out from there. Um, which is just so innocent because that's where we've always tried to figure everything out from. This might be a, a good segue to ask you, Amy. Hello. Hi. <laughs> to ask you if your books are color coded. <laughs> they are. They look like they're that color coded. Good eye. <laughs> yes, I'm that's a, my OCD coming out. <laughs> no, I like it. I'm a, I'm a visual. You know, I'm a. I do painting and photography sometimes so see stuff like that yeah <laughs> anyway yeah i love this topic it's exactly what i was writing about this morning or trying to write about and um ask her a question i don't have any questions i i uh it's i think it's right on on topic the you know i was looking at how we uh, was like what we identify with and uh, is I mean I I'll, I use a different language because I often write from the perspective of the non-duality understanding but it's like we if we identify with the separate self then fear and desire start being what is seems like it's running running us but as as a separate self we don't have any you know, it's like it's basically comes down to, to knowing who you are which is what you're talking about you're not that separate self who seems to be just at effects like and um, you know that world of good and bad right and wrong and, and seeking or resisting uh there's that effortless and ease of, of and learning to trust that that you can just let go and uh, and uh, what you are takes care of itself as it were yeah, it's like, you know, that constant feedback we're always getting. So when you see, right, when you're in that striving and that doesn't feel easy and all of that, like coming to really see, um, and I think we just do that through experience. Then it's like trust isn't even a, doesn't even need to be part. Like you just, of course you trust it because you've just seen it so much that when we're in that, that is that separate self, right? Like that's what the feelings are always, always, always showing us. Not that we're always going to remember, but but seeing that's just how that works. <laughs> when we're in the separate self, in our concepts, in our head, however you want to say it, it feels a certain, it has a, has a certain feeling level to it, and it's not light and free and easy. And it's, um, I mean, one can be very attached to it, too. Like, yeah. as in love with being this, you know, addicted to being this little human or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it gets, like you said, it's, it's, it's ironic. It's fine. Yeah. It's, you know, I guess at some level, maybe we're, we must be enjoying it. <laughs> enjoying the suffering, as it were. Yeah, but no, it's interesting. It has to be a choice, right? It's, it's what we are, freedom. I think eventually we get enough feedback that just wakes us up. Like, I think it's familiar. It's just, yeah. 
it's familiar and comfortable in an uncomfortable way and like all that weird stuff there, right? And if it makes us feel like we're important, we have this identity and all this kind of stuff. But at yeah. some point, that's where we just, we see, whoa, that person looks freer than me. Or we find ourselves in a habit or addiction or some problem that leads us inward, which again, I just love, like, it just feels like it's so orchestrated. It's like, it's just this. Making a call, yeah, yes. calling us back. Make a call. Yeah. Yeah. When, so when it's, it's like, it's like, yeah, calling us back to what we really are, who we, who we really are. But it's yeah. not even a who, it's just it's like what we all are, right? in, mm -hmm. in essence. Even though know, we can't see it, it's all, like I say, we're in this world of form and trying to figure it out. Manipulating objects, get it to work right. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it's got to be easier than that. Mm -hmm. I got to be seeing things wrong. It's just perspective. Amy, I have a question. One of the things that I've noticed in the three principles is is people have an experience with uh, uh, with with the three P, and they they go inside and they have a, have a beautiful feeling. So they know they found something. But then doubt comes in their mind that they don't know enough. Mm -hmm. And then they start to search outside by taking too much training outside. Or, or they, but the, the driving force that I see for a lot of people is doubt. And you must see that as well, of people doubting what they know. And then even though they know it, they, the, the doubt overrides. And then it's a spider web that persuades them that they have to go out and search for more uh, information or knowledge or another person has it much more than they have it which of course is not Sid's message we all have it and we it's our job really to live it and uh, not to just keep searching for more and more and more stuff so I, I wonder how you how you address that because I, I see that that is a confusing question for me I could respond to that if if you don't mind, I would like to throw something out there. Um, I see what you're saying, and there there can be doubt where you're just not trusting you know, what you are or what you know, what you really know. Mm -hmm. But there can be legitimate questions, too, that aren't getting really answered. And finding someone that can point you in the right direction or answer those hard questions can be really important. That's been important in my yeah in my journey, um, and sometimes you don't get them from certain areas, and you have to keep seeking until you satisfy yourself. Yeah, it is. A, it does seem like a bit of a you know. I think I can see how it's easy to get caught up in the seeming paradox of that because we talk about staying in the conversation and that there's there's no end to what we can see, which I always heard as okay, stay in the conversation and you're not, you know, you don't know anything yet. <laughs> Just the way my mind gave me that. So like we hear and that there's some, you know, there's something to that. Stay in the conversation and there's no end to what you can see. And at the same time though, what you're saying, Harry, is so right. Like seeing, wow, but this, this learning is the complete opposite, again, of any other learning where the more you learn about chemistry, the more you're going to know about, like the more chemistry classes you take, in general, by far the better you're going to be at chemistry. That's not the case here. <laughs> it's not a qua it's not a quantity thing, right? It's coming from within. So it's it is really interesting. But I do see that all the time with people where it's like I want to tell them and do tell them sometimes. I don't, you know, we never know what's best for anybody. But you get that sense that it's like just go get quiet. Like you have a bit of a foundation that's going to keep opening for you. But our habit, and I think it's, that's all it is, is we're so used to getting it through the intellect that our habit is, no, I need to get more. I actually had an interesting experience with this um, myself recently. Um, I don't know, it's a weird thing to talk about, but like I, when I came across the principles around uh, 2012, 11 or 12, I, um, I don't know, I feel like I saw something deep pretty quickly. Now, 
it's a, I, I hate to even like get into this. It feels like you're like I'm quantifying things and whatever. It just, I saw something and I wrote this book, Being Human, like literally, I mean, within months of first hearing of some videos on the Three Principles movie site, never met a Three Principles person in my life, never had even had a live conversation with them. I was listening to videos and saying, oh my gosh, like this just makes sense. And I wrote a book about it because <laughs> that's why I just, it just felt right. And, um, and now I can look at that book and say, okay, I would write that book differently today, but I still like, there's still an essence of, of stuff in there that was like, wow, that was awesome. And I got into that same doubt that you're talking about, Harry, where like I went out right away, people resonated with the book and wanted to hear more about it. But then I, somewhere in my mind, it was like, there's no way, there's no way that I just watched some videos online, you know, like in the middle of the night while I was feeding my kid, I had a brand new baby at the time. There's no way that was enough. And, and it, I don't even know if that was conscious, but it was definitely in there in the back of my mind. I'm like, I think I need more. So I can see how over the four or five years since, six years since then, I've done some things that just felt completely right. And then I've done some things that felt more like from that doubt place. And I actually recently did a, a program with Dick and, and that, that was my big insight from the whole time with him that I sat in his living room and said, I don't need to be here. <laughs> and he was like, that's music to my ears. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to offend it. I'm like, Dickon, I, you have nothing. And I love Dick and this, you know, but I'm like, you have nothing to tell me that I don't have within me. And he was so thrilled to hear that. <laughs> but I, I, but the thing is about this whole thing too, is like we're saying about feedback and like just always kind of seeing more when we see it. I don't know that I would have seen that. Like I saw it the way I saw it, right? I spent a lot of money and travel away from my kids a lot to sit in front of Dickon and say, I don't need you. Maybe that's just the way it had, that's the way it had to show up because that's the way it did show up. Um, but at the same time, we can kind of know that's a thing and see, yeah, that was just that doubt. That's powerful, Amy. That's what it's about. That's really an empowering story. That's the truth. That's, that's, <laughs> That's all we have. You have Amy. Yeah. And it's enough. And it was really powerful for me to get it, to really see it, that, yeah, yeah, see, oh, that was doubt, yeah. I had an experience with Elsie um, at, at the school where she, through what she said, I had this huge experience. What it did was it made me respect her more, but rely on her less yeah the experience is much more powerful than the individual human being yeah. yours is a powerful story keep telling that story it's a great story i love how you said it though i mean that's so right like you respect them more but there's no the reliance is just not there and then you're free to just listen when you feel like listening. Like hopefully all of you are here, right? Like I don't need anything from this. I'm just free to listen and hear what I hear. And yeah. yeah I think there is something to it being, there being habits. Yeah. It's, it, it's just like this kind of re repetition. And some of that is the doubts are just things that we've learned that the culture is telling us, you know, telling you what you are, what you could be, or what the nature of reality is even, you know, um, which don't seem consistent with the simplicity. Uh, so sometimes you do need to look at that, and not just try to push it aside and say, oh, but I don't, it's not about beliefs in other words. And so, and we can have beliefs or habits that keep coming back and address them. Some different for everybody. Uh, some of the stuff just comes up as like a unconscious reaction maybe. And so a feeling arises and that generates thinking. You go, whoa, where did that come from? So that's just another thing to, to look at. Yeah. Well, and just to look at that from a feeling level too and say, oh, I'm, I know what this is showing me. And then it's like, it's so much easier to look at it then because we see it for what it is and then we get to see what's behind it. Mm -hmm. not, not take it as, that's me, something bad's going on. Just yeah. Observe it. Yeah. Kind of friendly. 
friendly, benevolent way as we can. Is there a, another question for Amy from the? It's going to have to. Yes, go. I I have a I have a question. Hi, Marty. Well, I think the lady on the phone has. Yes. Hi. Oh, did some, someone else? Yeah, someone else too. I just saw your picture pop up. Yeah. Hi, this is Joan. Hi. Hi. I'm loving the conversation. Um, I I really appreciate the words, you know, stay in the conversation. Because for me, when I do have those doubts or those thoughts, and there's really very limited access in northern Wisconsin to have the conversation, I find I seek some wisdom in other people's journeys. So that, I, I hear you, Harry, when you say people have, are seeking, but I find when I seek, it's because I'm running into that ego construct and I, I would love to have, uh, you know, another person's thoughts on it live and in person because those are my opportunities to grow, but the access isn't as easy. Um, and I share that and I also appreciate Harry's wisdom and um, Greg's along the way. This, this is a great co conversation. Glad it's back. <laughs> Glad to have you back, Jeff. You know, a big part of this is that getting, gaining this understanding, getting a deeper understanding, whatever verbiage you want to use around it, it's exactly opposite of everything else that we do in life, where everything else is about adding more knowledge, about piling more stuff on top of what's already there. This is about letting go. You get this when you let go of your beliefs and ideals that you believe to be 100% true. It doesn't mean you can't come back to them later, but it's in the letting go that you experience that core essence. And I think that's what, what happened to me in 2012 when I had my big experience was that for that moment in time, I let go of that story of me. And I was just present to what was. That's the best way to have a great experience of this understanding is not to compare it to all the things that you've known before. Just look at it as it is. Feel free to go back to your old thinking if you want. I have a feeling that once you let it go and you, you kind of get this feeling, this experience from this, you won't want to go back. That's how it was for me anyway. I love that. And like, um letting our feel like you know in terms of getting constant feedback all the time that's we can see it like that right the feedback is just saying hey let go hey let go like if every time you don't feel the way you did as a five-year-old kid bouncing around in the yard hey let go you know like like i know that's a big job because that's so completely opposite of what we're used to doing with our heavy feelings but what if like that's the coolest thing to just consider what if we what if that's how it looked what if every time we started to feel this stuff bubble up, instead of grabbing something, fixing something, you know, worrying more, thinking about it more, we just were able to let go. Oh my gosh, I mean, everything would be so completely different. There's a question there, uh, Greg, from Bob and Mar uh, Marty. Do you have something? You're unmuted, I think. Actually, yeah. They're talking about Eric mentioned habit, and Greg, you talked about letting go. I had a real demonstration of that the other day. I had a fall, and I, it was like two and a half weeks ago, but yet it, I'd start to get better, and then it seemed to get worse, and the pain would increase. And I thought, what if I'm hanging on to my idea of how long it should take me to heal? Uh, what if the pain is more memory and thought than actual pain? So, because I would get ready to do something and I'd remember, oh, I better not move this way or I better not pick that up because that's when I feel the pain. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna watch so the next time I got up to do something I just got up and I did feel some pain and I thought but instead of remembering the pain why don't I look to the formless 
and where it all started from the wellness um that well-being and remembering how i felt before the pain before the accident and sure enough instantly the pain subsided it was still there but it wasn't important and i was able to move freely and do what i wanted and the more i paid uh just let go of it and didn't pay attention to it the more it subsided into the background so we do have like certain expectations oh it should take me another week to heal you know we we set ourselves up for certain beliefs and and a lot of it's programming too you know just what you hear other people say and from there you're taking their experience and applying it to your situation so it is about being curious about what's really going on with me right now and not and just letting go of expectations that's that's so i love that and it because it shows it highlights like how much like like i think eric was saying like how much or no it was greg talking about like where we focus so much of that's there that we don't even know is there but again in this that's what i love so much about this understanding is is in my past life i would have really taken that to task and tried to figure that out and why and what is this telling me and it, it all had a lot to do with me but i love how what you are seeing about it you know what you saw is like huh like it just kind of bubbled up like huh i wonder where there's some thinking some expectation here and, and it was just you reading the feedback the feedback you were getting is like oh there's some lingering suffering i'm I'm making this up, but I, I don't know if this is accurate or not really, but I mean, just as an illustration, if, if we know that suffering doesn't really, isn't meant to linger because experience moves through us. You feel pain, you have, you feel suffering, you feel joy. That's just how we're designed is for this to keep on moving through. Then you're on, you're naturally woken up to the fact that, wow, I'm suffering for a long time here. Something's not quite right. You know, and then it just like keeps lightning and freeing and stuff falls away and you get yeah. to see more. And it's funny Instead how it, out heavy about it. It's funny how we go with the flow with happiness. We have those yeah. moments of, of great joy. We don't expect them to last forever. We understand that it's, you know, it's part of it. But then when we dip down, suddenly we want to change it. We want to stop it. It can't be part of this cycle. It can't just be part of my experience of life. Yeah. But happiness and sorrow and pain and all of that is all part of it. Yeah. And if we just let it all flow, it's just much more enjoyable. We don't keep those moments of sorrow around as often or as long. They're not, you know, they're not, we're not focusing on it and keeping it in the forefront of our minds like, oh, I should be sad because this happened or, or whatnot. Yeah. What I see, Greg, and what you two are talking about, it's brought a little bit of a revelation to me. I always am interested in the spiritual nature of the principles. The flow is the spiritual nature of the principles. And so that's what you're talking about is spirit. But if you use the word flow, and of course, when we just let it flow, we're one, we're one with the oneness. Yeah. I never realized that before. That's a good word, flow. <laughs> That's not the spirit anymore. Let it flow. Hey, it be. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I went, okay. back, I went back 45 years to Amy. Sorry. <laughs> well, you just reminded me something. I think it was Amy that actually that I actually heard this from uh, about the. the uh, you know, the, the flow is, is like we're, we're by this river and everything's flowing, life flows by, the feelings, the emotions and everything. Every once in a while, there's a bear upstream that craps in the water. And we have this tendency of running out there with a bucket and scooping up that crap and saying, this shouldn't be here. And then we take it to everybody we know and say, look at this crap. Can you believe this? There's this crap. And everybody else goes, oh, yeah, that's crap. And then eventually people get tired of looking at that crap. So we go dump it out and we find the next one floating down the river and we scoop that one up and we run around everybody and say, look at this crap. Can you believe this crap? This is so much worse than the other crap I just had. 
and it's it, it we have that tendency as as people to just do that and focus on those things we're missing the the flow of it all and the natural beauty of life and the way things just happen on their own throw the bucket away <laughs> that's made of spirituality day uh, uh, uh. Uh, Greg, that perfectly describes it. That is native spirituality in its essence. Yeah, just throw away the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> well, think about that. That's an interesting just play on words, too. Like a bucket is a container, right? It's just some way that we contain something. And why are we containing it and carrying it around with us? It's the opposite of being open and in flow and just in the, in the presence of life. <laughs> Can I say something? Absolutely, Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, I, I think in a way it's a memory trick, isn't it? Because, because you know, if, if, you know, if you go to an art museum, this was just a metaphor I came up right now. If you go to an art museum, you, you have these small signs where it, someone's telling you what you're looking at. And you can read that and it's very, and, and then, oh, you, now you know what the, the professional art critic has said, whatever. Uh, or you could just stand in front of this beautiful picture <clears throat> and, ah, yeah without having to know about this was painted in this period or blah, blah, blah. You just have this direct experience. But I think my life, if I look at my life, a lot of my life has been like reading these, um, or getting an intellectual understanding or putting it in on a shelf or somewhere in my memory so that, so that in a way I got more and more um, away from what the, you know, experiencing directly what was going on in my life or uh, so 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 in a way in a way uh, getting to just be ah in the now because as soon as I'm not in the now I'm into into memory uh, yeah and and when I'm into memory it there's bound to be a you know something splitting a split uh, because uh, because uh, that's not now so so I just think, just so, well, uh, I remember being at Salt Spring Island, a wonderful experience. And my experience was that I, I got more and more quiet, which was strange in a way. <laughs> and I couldn't say anything. And the, which actually meant I was there. And wow. So... So uh, that's the simple simplicity of this teaching. No, no, I just said a lot, but I hope you get my point. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. If you're in the flow, then that makes you a flower, right? Floater. So. <laughs> no, you're a flower, which is spelled the same way as a flower, which flows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris, it's like, uh, you know, what the thought occurred to me when you started talking was we're actually talking to ourselves. You know, I mean, if there's, there's no filter, there's nothing in the way. That's kind of what the conversation is. <laughs> the mind can't really grasp that. But anyway, I just thought I'd toss that out there. <laughs> Love you, Eric. Beautiful. Thank you. And Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Even though you're me. <laughs> yeah. I'd like I to say I could look like that. <laughs> I'd like to say something, Harry. My name's Deanna, and and I was in recovery about two years ago, and I read several, several books, but one of them was yours, Amy, being human. It's interesting to hear that you wrote that early after you found out about the three Ps. But I think I still use that book because you, Harry was talking about doubts. When I left being immersed in the three Ps and I knew I was going to go home, I was really doubtful. And did I get it all? Did I really understand it? Is it something that will, I can carry forward into my life? 
And what I found out after a while is it is, but it, it sinks in. It's something that once you sort of have that awareness, it's always there in your mind. When I feel like I need to have a little refresher, I pick up your book, Amy, or Sid's, one of Sid's books, Missing Link, that has the short, real quick um, essay or saying that he said or the, the things you wrote about him being human. And every time I read them, it, there's something different that comes now. There's a different message that comes through. Um, and, it, and it's just like having a, a quick reminder. I, I mean, I, I like to read other books and things like that too, long books. But when it comes down to just, I want to get that little bit of a feeling again or that little bit of a boost, in my 3P awareness, um, those are the things I go to. So doubts, yes. Um, a little coaching every once in a while is, is great. And then to see you guys and talk about it is always a, a blessing too. That's awesome. And that's so great that you that you can just read something short and kind of feel reconnected with it that, and that it keeps changing for you. I mean, both of those things speak a lot to, to what you have seen that's within you, that for all of us, it gets covered up at times, but you just bounce right back to it when you hear something little, you know, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I find myself needing to re recognize often <laughs> um you know no matter how how much you think you understand it there's always like an evolution and, and um, i mean i go to sap sayings i read i listen to videos read books and that just remind me of like oh you know points you back points you back home and i think even people who are like high level spiritual teachers in the act of their teaching they're evolving. Yeah. It's not like suddenly we're all done. We we know everything. We're God. <laughs> uh, we're still here, right? So <laughs> something's going on. Well, this has been great, everybody. I want to be mindful of Amy's time here, where I think we're a little we're a little past what <laughs> what we had agreed on. Um, I'm late, but that's okay. It's an awesome to talk with you. I love it. I don't. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I, I would like to get one more thing out of you, Amy, though. Kind of okay. like a, a closing little statement here. What would you say to somebody who is still in their active addiction or, or negative habits, and they're just coming across the principles? I mean, just brand new, fresh. If there's just one thing you could say to give them some hope and and get them on track, what would you say? Well, I love what you said earlier, Greg, about the best, the best way to just be in a place to hear something from within us. So this just points us back to within us is to, is to just like how Dickon always used to say it to me in the, or my earliest days of talking with him was just like, be dumb. He'd say, you're, you're just too smart. You just be dumb, be dumb. And just like, sometimes people don't like hearing it like that, but I always resonated with that. Like, yeah, I do need to be more dumb. So just, you know, see, see that there's so much hope in this because so many people have, have seen something from within themselves that has changed things that they never thought could change. And at the same time, as we're, as we're on to the hope that's in it, just kind of walk through it step by step as dumb as you can be. Like, I have no idea what's here, what's going on, what I'm doing in my life, why I'm doing it, what's next, what's coming. But just, just be like a kid, right? Just soaking it all in. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much, Amy. I, I really appreciate it. I know I screwed up on scheduling on this, but I, I definitely appreciate you uh, extending your, <laughs> your time here. Well, so, I missed a bit of my son's soccer game, but it's raining here anyway, so I'm sure he'll forgive me and it'll save me from sitting in the rain for <laughs> a few minutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome talking with you guys. I really, really love your group. Nice and here. It's always great to have you on here. I'm oh, excited. Really happy you for you doing for the little school. Big change. Uh, Thank you. Yep, I'll unmute everybody so everybody can say thank you and goodbye and everything. And everybody have a wonderful day. Beautiful, Amy. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy.
Thank you.